Thank you to Hairpin Art Center for being our streaming partner. Any Squared Spotlight Art Talks highlight member and friend artists of all ages and experiences. So welcome everyone to Any Squared Spotlight. And this week's spotlight is on Mr. Pinto Muro. And he is a muralist and illustrator and also a very good friend of Any Squared. And he's been around Any Squared probably for the last five years. I saw some pictures way back. <laughs> um, uh, on and off. And um, yeah. he's, he's, he's participated in exhibits and he participated in participates in our studio days and he's a lovely friend and a wonderful artist and um and hey yes yes and um and before we start the slideshow you can introduce yourself um and here okay. we go all right um hi everyone um good evening and Thank you guys so much for coming. I am extremely grateful uh, that you guys are here. My name is este, Mr. Pintamuro, uh, alias Josue Aldana. Um, I'm just very excited to be here and uh, share a little bit about myself and my art and see how, uh, 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 how we can complement each other this evening. <laughs> uh, yeah, so without further ado, I, I think we can, you know, get this uh, ball rolling and uh, yeah. Share the so, screen. Yeah, Tracy. Yeah, we could start it. Okay. Um, so yeah, so Mr. Damuro, uh, illustrator, visual artist, muralist. Uh, I, uh, I've been living in Little Village for uh, for about 15 years, I grew up in the neighborhood. Um, I'm originally from California. Uh, I, my parents uh, moved to Mexico and then they <clears throat> uh, moved here to Chicago uh, 15 years ago. Uh, so I've been living here in Little Village uh, uh, and working. Uh, to this day and so yeah you could next slide and so just again as Mr. Pintamuro um, I'm passionate about creating art that adds to the visual landscape abroad especially in Chicago I have over 10 years of experience effectively installing murals and strategizing ways uh, to highlight, magnify indigenous cultural spaces, blending manga and PC together fragmented ancestral stories and an innovative visual experience for local audiences and international viewers. Uh, I was raised in Little Village and I am an avid illustrator, Tlacuilo, and I'm excited to share my work and culture with you guys, uh, folks, this evening. Uh, I, uh, Tlacuilo means artisan in Nahuatl. Uh, and uh, I am uh, learning a lot about this language, and it's a, it's a, it's been an interesting and wonderful journey about decolonization. So, next slide. Uh, so, production mediums. Uh, there are a variety of mediums I use for my production process, uh, not limited to watercolor, uh, pen and graphite, ink, markers, aerosol paint, acrylic, water-based latex paint, and uh, graphic design, digital illustration to um, uh, really uh, 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 put a lot of uh, emphasis on my characters and uh, character design and concept art. And uh, yeah, and so I, uh, so I've been uh, so I've been engaging with like the, uh, messing around with these uh, uh, mediums and <clears throat> and there's a variety of them. Uh, I like how um, uh, using these mediums merge and complement and clash with each other <laughs> because sometimes I 
uh, and like experimenting with uh, with these mixing them around. Uh, next slide. And so you can see um, I'm just a little bit of the production process. Here are some images of me uh, prepping a wall. Uh, there's a scaffold right there for a mural installation that I was um, working on. Uh, here are some like sample images that I kind of draw uh, um, ins inspiration from from uh, uh, yeah, just various uh, communities and 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 I really like uh, that texture uh, of really saturated colors and that you know that make spaces uh, come to life and the colors in a way have sound and and it's a sensory thing that I very very much enjoy a lot. Um, yeah, so you could uh, right over there, the um, gentleman underneath me, that's uh, by the street artist, his name is El Noise. And El Noise is a uh, incredible uh, hyper-realist street artist from Cuernavaca, Mexico. And he is absolutely uh, a genius with his, uh, with his uh, style and, and can control. And I really enjoy uh, him uh, hit, spending time with him and under uh, under the just very short, compressed time, uh, time itinerary that I had over there when I was in uh, Morelos. And so, uh, but the few times I got a chance to engage with this uh, artist, uh, he, uh, he let me paint this nice wall. It was, it was big <laughs> in, uh, in Cuernavaca, especially in the, uh, in the center of Cuernavaca. And so uh, it's the only skate park there. And so I had a chance to uh, really uh, get really messy with him. Yeah, you could play the next slide. Shout out to him. So this is one of my uh, uh, recent projects. I was with uh, in Lhasa, Chicago. Uh, we <clears throat> collaborated together to uh, work uh, work with the students and design a mural that uh, provided uh, an insight to uh, the migration situation and how we and how developing this, uh, asking the students questions uh, uh, about migration, uh, their experiences with dealing with uh, ICE and all these uh, and all these uh, irregularities of citizenship. And so uh, it, it was a great uh, it was a great uh, conversation and dialogue through Zoom and. It was one of those uh, 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 constrained conversations uh, that it was maybe it was like five students and two faculty members from uh, in Lhasa uh, and Farragut, and we all like were exchanging ideas and what can be the best uh, mural. And so uh, I primered everything myself. It was a very uh, impromptu, uh, 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 prying job. Um, and uh, but you know I managed I managed to do that and it was a very uh, <clears throat> and it was a, just a very quick uh, a project but you know we emphasized a lot of uh, uh, detail and 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 also interactiveness throughout that and and throughout the production and so it was a lot of engagement it was a lot of uh, excitement and uh, and so we were very happy of the result that we all like engaged and so you could play the next slide. I also went to that high school, by the way, as a footnote. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so yeah, so this is the mural, uh, Todos Somos Migrantes, We Are All Migrants. And it just talks about uh, narratives that um, sort of are pieced together by our ancestors uh, migrating to and fro in this continent and how these invisible borders of the settler colonial state that is the United States and sort of the corporatocracy that it is, I think that it's a, uh, you know, we, we use this uh, uh, um, mural as, as, as a backdrop because it's uh, fair. So, so this was the uh, end result of, of this piece. And, uh, and I, we, despite me not actually physically engaging the students because of COVID and because uh, there are other forces at play, uh, especially with like the school being closed or, or not, having access to access to the facility it was it was a it was uh it was very irregular uh uh times that i would go in and it would be weird intervals but you know i, I managed to uh, uh uh 
uh, wiggle wiggle my way in the school and, and get you know get the project done in two weeks and it was and I really loved it because you know it's the textile the textile design the the uh, um, <clears throat> The scales of the monarch wing are, you know, fists, and 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 you have the Chicago stars, and and you have uh, silhouettes of, of of families, you know, migrating uh, to Chicago, and yeah, it's the uh, a, uh, ubiquitous uh, message of um, of human migration, and and uh, especially, like I said, in in these lands. So I painted that mural. Uh, by myself, uh, it was a uh, yeah. It was a lot of it was a lot of uh, <clears throat> uh, uh, um, uh, maneuvering, but you know I managed to do it by myself. Uh, the students uh, didn't help because the students uh, also had you know their fears of contracting COVID, and so uh, we we did manage, and so they uh, they had a lot of say in designing this uh, this mural, and you could see the uh, yeah. So next slide. And so this, uh, and so this is called uh, Fragmentos Obsidiana. Uh, it's still unfinished uh, because of I was working, <laughs> I was yeah, I work a third shift job, and uh, so I work at this factory at uh, Ferrera, uh, Ferrera Roche, and uh, so you know I get really tired and working the graveyard shift, and so I had this summer you know, to. To, that I thought that I had the willpower to, you know, to knock it out two murals and, and in that short span, but then I realized that uh, it was a, a bit off a little bit more than I can chew. But, uh, but that didn't change uh, how radically <laughs> I, uh, 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 um, I got it, you know, to get it all the way uh, complete, like I get it, like I got it now. And I had uh, Little Village Locals, uh, uh, help me out. Uh, they're a uh, punk uh, page and uh, on Instagram, and they uh, they did a call for artists who can help out. And uh, well, the artists weren't the artists were help, and they were very helpful. And uh, but you know they were it was very short, very short spurts, and it wasn't like uh, it wasn't like they were actually wanting to do it. I think it was just more like uh, uh, they were uh creating uh, uh it was just a lot, it was just a lot of uh, people just trying to you know come in and you know not it wasn't as helpful as i would think but you know they did their very best in like filling in spaces and and and, and getting and getting a big chunk of this meal completed but like to give a to just the kind to just to kind of give an overview of you know fragmentos obsidiana so fragmentos obsidiana translates to obsidian fragments uh, the concept of obsidian it can denote a uh, a force of nature known as Tezcatlipoca. And Tezcatlipoca is the subconscious, the the unconscious and what's conscious in our in our waking lives uh, and spirit. And so what this obsidian fragment is, is just there are bits and fragments of <coughs> of this uh, once uh, great civilization that in many ways it, a lot of their a lot of the stories especially on anthropological and archaeological uh, 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 platform uh, are not a lot of the uh, facts are, are just are more variables as opposed to actual actual things that have happened uh, because of that and a lot of things uh, were passed down orally, and you, you, and so we don't have a a clear and concise history of you know of the Mexica people, and so it's all left to just speculation or for a lot of these uh, archaeological archaeological uh, studies, and um, and because most of them are uh, connected to the uh, uh, to the friars and and how the friars wrote about this in third person as if the events that happened during the conquest of Mexico uh, uh, were happened to them specifically. And so there's a lot of uh, misinformation that has been uh, uh, passed around. And so this obsidian, this uh, obsidian, this obsidian uh, sheet is broken and it's broken into many different parts. And some of this part comes with like a, a, 
you know, mestizaje and, and just uh, uh, trying to uh, uh, connect to uh, 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 this, uh, this, once, uh, this once great civilization that, uh, uh, that has just been uh, uh, um, put in the back burner, but now it's just, you know, coming to light. And, and also I, I incorporate a lot of, uh, as you can see, a lot of indigenous elements, uh, symbols, and, and, and just landscapes that I pay homage to um, um, my, uh, where I'm from in Mexico. Uh, and then as well as, um, as, as well as like visages of, of, um, of warriors and, and, and eagles and, and flowers and butterflies. And it's, and it's a wonderful uh, 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 link the, of an age past and, and it's, but it's all fragmented. It's all piece, bits and pieces of, uh, of memory. So that's why it's, that's why this mural is called uh, Obsidian Fragments. And, and then you, you have like Emiliano Zapata, you have uh, different parts of Mexico represented, especially indigenous people being represented uh, here. And so uh, you have a, you have a very sacred symbol of Esli Ehekad who right there between like two corns. So I want this Esli Ehekad uh, translate just basically means um, uh, uh, spirit, uh, spirit snake, uh, but spirit frequency. And so our wind frequency. And so like all of this is just sort of scattered in the wind, this uh, bits in this uh, obsidian fragment. So like if, if we look at these uh, symbols and it, a lot of it is uh, connected with the imagery, the story is told by the images of, uh, of, of, of this mural. You can play the next slide. And so here are some like uh, members of the community uh, helping out and uh, and what's really good about this uh, about this uh, and that I can uh, reminisce is that uh, members of the neighborhood are always uh, showing up and uh, and uh, expressing their you know their love of art and their love of community engagement. And, and it's always, and it's been showered, I've been showered with compliments uh, in the neighborhood about, about, you know, about this mural. Uh, I've gotten people bringing me breakfast or, or, you know, someone asking me, oh, take my picture uh, because this, you know, reminds me of Mexico. This reminds me of home. This reminds me of my homeland. So there's this uh, a, a connection to memory and there's a connection to, 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 to this piece particularly because um, it, it, it greatly improves um, <clears throat> uh, uh, um, our connection uh, uh, to something that uh, we weren't able to express this, uh, 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 especially uh, Native American art or, or its you know, symbols or, or a lot of that spirituality until 1978 uh, with uh, the Native American uh, Spiritual Act. And, uh, well, I'll go into that later, but you know, for now, it's just a lot of it is just about memory. And there's this like, oh, and I had like this little girl right here who's like on the chalk. She said, uh, <clears throat> "Not, I'm sorry, not the, not that little girl." Uh, <laughs> uh, it was a, uh, it was just a, it was just someone who was helping me out and says like, oh, like, and what happened to this uh, city? Like, what happened to the city that you know floated? And I said, oh, well, it became one of the biggest cities, you know, on this continent, which is Mexico City. And it's bigger than New York, Los Angeles, Chicago. And, uh, and it's the epicenter for all of um, um, commerce, <laughs> especially uh, uh, here. And so, uh, so it's a very, uh, so, so it tells that, um, so it's, you know, it tells that, that, uh, um, that's, that story. Uh, and so, uh, yeah, that's the, uh, so that's Fragmentos del Tiviana, uh, folks. Uh, it's, uh, it's an unfinished uh, project. Uh, I hopefully to have it finished by March. Um, I will be posting about that and, and, and you know, getting, getting, just gearing that mural up because uh, there's this, the far right of it is just, there's some bits and parts that are unfinished, but you know, I'm working on them. And uh, it's, it's very, it's like I said, it's an exciting uh, 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 endeavor that I'm, uh, embarking on, especially in completing a, a, a mural like this. Um, so yeah, so next slide. Jose can, Jose, can you talk about the mural that's underneath? Which one? The mural that's underneath it. 
Oh yeah, that's um, that's Vida, and uh, she. I gave her a bunch of chalk, and she uh, wanted to. Uh, oh, drive sorry, I said the. I said the mural that's underneath, underneath that mural. Oh, 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 I have a slide for that. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Oh, next slide. Um, and then this one, um, I'll, I'll be brief with this one. Uh, so this one was just a, uh, this one was out on whim. <laughs> it wasn't, uh, it wasn't like a lot of intent, uh, but I did put a lot of intention, especially with what, um, uh, something that really changed, uh, my perspective radically, uh, in creating uh, this piece. Uh, but with that, uh, somehow, uh, art is still healing communities and art has a way to engage with a lot of the trauma and, and violence that, that affects uh, communities that are disenfranchised. And uh, it, was a, it was a great experience, uh, but at the same time, there was a lot of uh, a, a contention. And, but uh, there, you know, but there, you know, there's, there's hope, you know, in, in this and, and a lot of, uh, like I said, neighbors, you know, come out and still support the mural, and you know that's a, uh, and it's now, uh, a, it's now like part of the neighborhood, and people, and folks uh, really enjoy this. Uh, so yeah. So, next slide. <laughs> what what, so what do you mean contention? Contentious means uh, it's just polemic, and I think we could. So hold on one second, Mirre, and so I could Sorry. just finish this. I'll save it for the end. Sorry about that. Thank you, Papo. Este, so this one is a mural that I uh, painted out in Morelos. And it was, so I was out there in Morelos for uh, three weeks. And this was in Temisco. But it was like way in the boonies of Temisco. It was like way, way out there. And, uh, and so it was very difficult uh, to, to engage uh, with the locals because of most of them I didn't speak Spanish and some of them just spoke straight up Nahuatl and it was very hard to, um, it was very hard to uh, oh <laughs> speak Spanish because I, you know, I was trying to go to the, the paint store or get supplies and, and it'd be one person that would be help, that would help me trans, uh, help me translate, but it was just always, it was always difficult and uh, it was, uh, it was a, uh, a um, it was kind of it was it was a lot of fun, but at the same time, I learned about uh, how <clears throat> how important it is to like continue to conserve you know this language and 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 it was just so uh, beautiful hearing you know uh, the language of the Mexica people and I and so I did a, I said so I did this mural uh, with uh, with getting to know uh, the artisans out there. Uh, talking to uh, youth who um, who who did uh, who did speak Spanish and Nahuatl, and they uh, and they also uh, participated, you know, in creating this mural. Uh, they were there were a lot of um, <laughs> there, because there was a lot of uh, uh, um, mm, there weren't a lot of students or or you know youth who wanted to participate in this because it was just like a language barrier and. Uh, and some of them were really shy, uh, and some of them just didn't want to get their picture taken or, or that. But uh, well, we but I managed to to create this, and it was a, uh, and and I think that uh, the, the times that we're in today, it's just you know this mural was a, uh, was a uh, was sponsored by, the Federación de Clubes Morelenses. They uh, they help sponsor. Uh, the paint, uh, the the supplies, and uh, uh, my trip out there, my uh, my residency out there, and I met uh, uh, troves of artists who were uh, who were uh, constantly uh, engaged and, and wanting to know more about uh, uh, Chicago and uh, what what kind of art you know is expressed out there, and how do we uh, 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 develop more art that is 
about the colonization, uh, um, uh, what's, what, can we, what can we pass down orally uh, uh, through the stories uh, that uh, the indigenous people, the Tlawika people, uh, uh, specifically in this region, uh, uh, talk about. And so what, what's, what's going on here uh, is like you, it was more uh, as a celebration of the flora and fauna that exists in Temisco, Morelos. Um, and in Temisco, Morelos, uh, there is, uh, there's a river. Um, I think it's called uh, Cositeo Playo. And, um, and, in, and in this river, there's uh, species of birds, lots of birds, lots of, uh, um, uh, lots of birds. Uh, one of them is like, there's a lot of like herons and hummingbirds and uh, 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 eagles. It's, it's, it's a beautiful, it's a beautiful uh, uh, place where it's, there's a lot of biodiversity. And so you have uh, some of the glyphs of the Misco. So the glyph of the Misco, the Misco translates in Nahuatl to uh, the place of the stone um, <clears throat> wild cat. And, and so you have, uh, the, so you have on the left, you have uh, Nawi Aheka, you have four winds, and you have the symbol of the Misco sort of uh, um, being created. And then in the center, you have uh, the Chinelo, and then you have this the Tlawika uh, uh, woman, uh, and the moon represents Mexico uh, because uh, Mexico translates uh, the center of the moon in Nahuatl, and then you have uh, the central deity in all the pre-Hispanic uh, uh, worldview, the co cosmovision of, of the pre-Hispanic, uh, it's Quetzalcoatl, which is uh, the feathered serpent. And then you have um, <clears throat> the Matmat bird, which is uh, uh, the bird that uh, that represents the state of Morelos. And like I said, it's it's just it's a lot about the flora and fauna, and and it's it was a great opportunity to engage with uh, the indigenous communities in Mexico, uh, despite uh, the language barrier. But it was a great and wonderful uh, three months that I spent out there, and. Uh, and I just want to emphasize that I'm super grateful to La Ayudantilla de Morelos and because they were the ones that unfolded this great trove of, um, of, lo uh, of, of culture and, and, and community that, that a lot of people uh, tend to not focus on when they're, in, um, when they're in this area of Mexico. A lot of them just go to Cuernavaca and enjoy the city or uh, Tepoztlan. But when you go towards like, uh, like outside of the Misco, it's this, uh, it's this community that still upholds a lot of, you know, their uh, traditions and ceremonies that are um, synchronistic to the Catholic uh, uh, church. And uh, yeah, so next slide. And so here he had me working on it. And so here was this lovely lady uh, uh, who wanted to pose uh, with me. And so this really quick story is like she uh, was speaking to me in Nawa because I was working, I was working on it, you know, arty. <laughs> and, uh, and this really sweet lady, she was selling flowers. Uh, so uh, she was selling flowers right on that corner. <laughs> And I was working and she was just, she stared at me. I didn't stare at her, but she was looking at me. She smiles, uh, she gets up and she taps my, she, was, she tapped my waist because she was just very, she was a very tiny lady, <laughs> very sweet. And she says something to me in Nahuatl. Uh, I did not, I, I didn't know what, 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 you know, what she was saying to me. Uh, I only said, este, hablo español, hablo solamente hablo español. And is the, the only thing I could say in Nahuatl is like, um, is tortilla and thank you. <laughs> and so, um, and, uh, and so, uh, and so I had to go inside the, the building here and have someone help me translate what she was set, telling me. And she's like, and so this lady, she's like, her name is Esther. Mina, she tells me, Mijo, um, she's asking that you could take her picture. And I was like, what? Yes, she loves this. I was like, oh, oh, yes, yeah, yeah. Uh, tell her to, you know, 
you know, pose right here and this and that. And yeah, and that's how I managed to take uh, this picture of her. Uh, and it, but then she was trying to uh, talk to me and she, um, <laughs> uh she was trying to you know and get, talk to me and uh and i didn't know what to say and so i had it mean right there uh in the middle and mean works at the ayudantia uh just to kind of give you context uh like folks and uh and then she uh and then i told her like well tell her that i'm very grateful that she can decide you know she's deciding to um uh, you know, to pose here and tell her, uh, I, I did say, and that means thank you in um, Nahuatl. And, uh, and it was just this uh, vibe of just, you know, gratefulness. And then she ended up giving me these flowers of Pericon for where I, where I was staying at my residency. And I had these uh, beautiful flowers that smelled incredible uh, in my, um, <laughs> in, the, in the spot where I was staying at. And, uh, and those flowers, I, you know, because of the heat in Mexico, it's just a very dry heat and flowers, you know, pick tend to wither uh, quickly. Uh, but this, it was just so magical that these flowers, uh, you know, lasted for like a month and a half without wilting. And it was just, it was just, it was just this uh, genuine gratefulness that was exchanged. And I, and I will never forget her. Um, <clears throat> yeah, it was, uh, it was lovely. It was lovely. It was a lovely time uh, when I was out there uh, <clears throat> in Morelos. Uh, so yeah, next slide. And so here is the Plaza Lido in Cuernavaca. Um, so Pl the Plaza Lido is in the center of, of Cuernavaca city. And in, but there is no, there's not, there's not a lot of, uh, um, there's not a lot of skate parks uh, or, or lack of spaces for youth to, um, creative spaces and so uh there is this uh there's the, the only skate park that's there in Cuernavaca city and these um these street artists have uh, reclaimed uh the space and they transform it into this enormous gallery uh and uh and so i was there uh through the the federation of clubes morelenses to uh celebrate the centennial of emiliano zapata's uh, <clears throat> uh, uh um life and uh, and I was and I was there for uh, uh, three months as, as well, and creating uh, murals. And so, uh, so I ended up like I was on crunch time, and I only I only had a I only had like a week left because uh, the production out there was me really immersing myself in the Tlahuica Nahuatl culture uh, in Morelos. And so when I had a chance to finally get to the city, city, I only had like oh, you only got a week left, and so you gotta you gotta work. <laughs> You gotta work fast, and so uh, and so I did, and so uh, noise, um, noise uh, collaborated uh, greatly with me, um, and uh, we and so we developed this uh, this mural uh, that uh, that it's about culture and Emilio Zapata and his legacy. Um, I've been asking noise all this whole week to send me those pictures, but. Uh, he's just in it, he's just a very busy artist in Cuernavaca that he had didn't get the time to uh, send him to me uh, for tonight, but uh, I will be uh, um, uh, sh I'll be sending it to the Any Square site so that way you guys can see uh, the mural that uh, we completed out there in La Plaza Lida in Cuernavaca, uh, and uh, it like and it's filled with uh, uh, hyper realistic uh, 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 um, Mexican heroes and 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 also. Uh, connecting Little Village and Cuernavaca uh, um, together in that respectively. And so, yeah, so it, it was a great uh, a, a time. And I was in that short week where I was in Cuernavaca. But uh, yeah, I managed to um, create, a, you know, add to that visual landscape out there as well. Uh, so yeah, so next slide, please. And so here, uh, before I left to, um, Morelos, uh, here's this mural on 26 and Millard. This one is called uh, uh, Ramos Celestial, or Celestial Bouquet. And so here is just uh, 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 a, a glimpse at the, the, uh, the, like I said, the flora and fauna of Mexico. Uh, some of these 
some of these you'll find like the birds, the axolotl, and the sholoth is the shol, is it? Cholokitzeli, and you have the uh, the, uh, the coyote with the um, with the feathers, and it's supposed to uh, be a a spirit in nature. Um, it's supposed to uh, uh, be Kitzalcoatl's uh, uh, Nawal, and uh, you have here uh, uh, the uh, it's just a bouquet of flowers uh, that are coming from the sky uh, because of the the Triki indigenous woman uh, to the left, uh, where the toucan is perched on top of her. So it's uh, so this Triki woman has the sipakli uh, head with the feathers. That's that's the note uh, memory and uh, an origin. And so uh, her bouquet, her origin from the sky, uh, it comes from uh, uh, this ancestral memory and the connection. Uh, the connection she has with the land. To make flowers uh, a bloom, and so you have this the Don Pedro right here. He always hooked it up with the paletas. Uh, he was just a wonderful uh, gentleman. Uh, he was uh, from he's Purepecha uh, descent. So he uh, so he was uh, so he talked to me in, in his Purepecha uh, language, and it was uh, he uh, he just said uh, 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 he said uh, have a good afternoon, and I, I really appreciated that. Um, and so, yeah, so he was uh, sharing, you know, his, uh, his migration story when, well, while I was working on this production. Uh, next slide, please. And so here's like uh, the Chinelos who came, uh, who came out in support uh, 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 the, uh, uh, this mural. Uh, the, so there are various comparsas, uh, dancer troops uh, throughout Chicago. But um, but they all are localized uh, with the clubes uh, morelenses, and so the chinelo has its origin uh, in Morelos uh, because chinelo means uh, 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 chinelo just means a person that jumps. It means to jump in, in that one, uh, and uh, and so a lot of the uh, a lot of the, the the costume and the regalia behind the chinelo is. Uh, it's this. Uh, it's a merger between uh, uh, the. Uh, it's an effigy of the of the of the master or, or the uh, the plantation owner or the hacienda owner, and it was also the copili or penacho uh, or headdress of an Aztec or uh, an Aztec <coughs> nobleman, and so it was this uh, dance that was a. Uh, that uh, that synergize, you know, throughout uh, throughout its uh, throughout its conception. Uh, um, uh, it originated in uh, Playa Capan, uh, Morelos, and uh, the if you could see right there, there's a chinelo that's white with blue stripes. That is the original uh, uh, color scheme of the chinelo, and the other colors of the chinelo are most. It mostly depends on the artisan and and what kind of uh, uh, um, filigree, you know, they, 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 and, and adornments they kind of put on, and it's mostly on, out of artistic whim. And so, so a lot of it is just, you know, it's a, it's a, it's, it's a mix uh, of both in, uh, of indigenous uh, dance and also uh, banda or tamborazo that's, that's incorporated in, in this, uh, in that mix. And so they, it's a lot of fun. I get to dance. I, I know how to, I know how to jump a little bit. Uh, with them, and so, uh, so it, it was a great, it was a great uh, time when they came out, and and we uh, and we did our we did our very best to, uh, you know, to 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 connect with you know everyone in the neighborhood, and the entire <laughs> the entire block came out just to just to dance with the chinelos, and then yeah, and then yeah, we all went home, and yeah, we all had a all had good food afterwards, but yeah, I, it was a great. It was a great time because afterwards I ended up going to um, uh, 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 Mexico uh, afterwards for three months. So it was a it was a good time. It was a good time. Next slide, please. So this one uh, was with uh, Weinberg Hosiery and uh, Chicago D Case uh, 
help inaugurate uh, this mural and uh, to put it on the map. And so this mural is called uh, Camino al Paraiso or Road to Paradise. And it is a, um, it is, it unfolds as this, uh, it, it's not like this one arrow that's bound determining the next, it's this, it's this, uh, 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 um, it's this connection uh, to uh, this is uh, because when uh, the friars and the, the conquistadors came uh, to these shores, they called this the new world. And, uh, and so the, and so it was uh, 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 Franciscan and Jesuit friars who said like, oh, well, you know, this is, we have to make, this is paradise, this is what, you know, their God had, you know, sent them to do. And, uh, but, you know, in paradise, uh, they're, you know, it's all, you know, paradise is subjective. And, uh, but this mural though, is the, uh, is this road to paradise. It's, it's the road uh, to connect uh, 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 the culture and, uh, 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 and something that was uh, ripped uh, from us, uh, especially uh, for someone who uh, uh, it was born here in the United States and someone that uh, 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 constantly uh, takes, takes in bits and parts of, you know, my imposter syndrome of not being Mexican enough or indigenous enough or, or being, uh, being American. And so there's this, uh, you know, where do I find paradise and, and where, so I find this paradise, you know, in the art uh, that I create. And so uh, Weinberg Hosiery, uh, to those who uh, don't know Weinberg Hosiery, it's on 630 uh, <clears throat> West Roosevelt Road. Uh, you won't miss it. It's, uh, uh, you know, it's not, uh, yeah, yeah, but I, I'm not going to bring up the negative. Let's, let's focus on the positive. This world is already effed up as it is. Uh, so, uh, I, yeah, a lot of, a lot of stuff happened in the production of this mural. Uh, one for one, it's, it's, uh, it, it was, um, it was one of those things where, uh, where I, uh, where, where the, uh, where the owner was trying to, uh, uh um, uh, the owners, uh, have, uh, migrant workers working for them, and they uh, expressed, uh, and they they expressed uh, to <laughs> no, uh, uh, they expressed uh, their their need to uh, activate more public space, uh, public spaces through art, and so they reached out uh, to DKs and and as well to inaugurate this mural, and 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 it was a great uh, opportunity in which. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, Maxwell Street Market was like right there, and, and it's a great place to experience authentic, uh, uh, authentic Mexican food, uh, 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 um, and just th this whole bazaar of like you know of multiple, uh, 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 I'm sorry, uh, multicultural uh, 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 vendors, you know, at Maxwell Street Market, and even before then, how um, uh, 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 Maxwell Street Market. Uh, uh, um, you know, faced a lot of that. Uh, 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 it has a lot of history with like UIC and 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 sort of the uh, uh, um, sort of the the push and the first wave of um, you know the dreaded G word and uh, and so uh, and so yeah, it, it was a it, it was a it was a call to action. But uh, Weinberg Hogazuri, uh, they were they were very generous and they uh, they allowed me to um, yeah to add on to more to that space and. And they uh, and they've been um, <clears throat> and they've been really uh, uh, just wonderful, wonderful, wonderful uh, 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 folks who have like who gave me an opportunity to be a lot more visible uh, in the city and and for allowing me to have a little uh, a lot more visibility uh, 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 there there then uh, and so yeah. Uh, um, uh, and so, yeah, you can play the next <laughs> So, yeah, so here's, uh, so here's me working on, on the wall. Um, you can see, uh, 
uh, there's some development happening. And so I laid out like black paint on it just so uh, when I incorporated more uh, colors, uh, the colors would pop out and, and really leap out of the wall. And, uh, and so, yeah, there's me working with a homie, homie of mine that I met uh, uh, there. And then uh, he was a great, uh, he didn't, had no artistic skill, but uh, he was just uh, someone that was just walking by and says like, hey, can I, uh, can I help out? And I said, yeah, sure. Um, and so uh, across from there though, across from the Weinberg Hosiery, uh, there's like a lot of, there's a lot of, uh, uh, it's a, uh, there's a lot of people who are marginalized, a lot of homeless people uh, on the side, but they, the homeless people have been nothing but uh, great, uh, uh, um, <laughs> not only critics, but they, uh, they've shown uh, a lot of support. Um, some of them would just even like set up and just uh, watch, watch me paint or uh, they would often share uh, some of their food with me and we would like have great conversations uh, within, you know, within that, within that's, you know, a lot of time and uh, they express, you know, how, express, you know, just, you know, their, their narratives and, and how it was, um, uh, uh, how it was all, uh, uh, how it was all like, you know, connected and how it's wonderful to see uh, 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 this art uh, uh, highlighted and it was it was a great time uh, working at Weinberg Hosiery. Uh, there was a there was a few setbacks but you know there's major comebacks out of setbacks and it was and it's a and so yeah so you can play the next slide and so here's my um, Calpulli and so this is my uh, Aztec uh, dance uh, troupe so this is uh, I practice with them. Uh, um, we still practice, uh, and we still, you know, uh, you know, do uh, social distancing. But you know, when we when we do get together, you know, we still have, you know, we still honor our ancestors. We still participate uh, in ceremony, and uh, we're still we're getting ready to go to Sundance soon. And so, uh, yeah, and so here here they are, and uh, just wonderful people who have helped me. Uh, 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 you know, uh, guide guide my path a bit better. Uh, elders that are also part of of the um, also part of that uh, part of that makeup as well uh, have you know expressed uh, a great uh, uh, a great uh, uh, um, uh, <laughs> great regards towards me and and they uh, they 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 respect what I do and they uh, they uh, honored me with uh, with the name Plaquilo. And so it was, uh, uh, and it was very, very, uh, and it was a very great uh, opportunity uh, to to have them there and, and inaugurate this this uh, the space and and uh, and yeah, just honor the space with uh, with also uh, sacred imagery that uh, is uh, connected to uh, Mexica uh, uh, symbols and, and and also spirituality. And so it was a great. Uh, so here they are, and we're Huaya. Yeah, yeah, she does make jewelry. Um, <clears throat> uh, yeah, so here they are, and uh, uh, yeah, so there's Tlanes, uh, the far right. Um, yeah, yeah, so you can play the next slide. So here um, is this mural right here. This is in Tamiawa, Veracruz. Uh, this is uh, where, where I'm from uh, in Mexico. And in Tamiawa, Veracruz, uh, so those three are my cousins. Uh, they're Huasteca, uh, Huasteca <laughs> Nahuatl or Totonac. Uh, they, uh, they're just wonderful. There's, uh, they're wonderful. They're, they're just wonderful, wonderful uh, 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 humans that I, that I miss and love. I connect with them here and there with WhatsApp. Uh, and uh, I, and they're just a very, uh, very sweet, uh, very sweet, uh, um, uh, humans. I, I really just enjoy, uh, I really enjoyed my time when I was out in Tamiawa because uh, it's a, Tamiawa means, in Nahuatl, it means uh, the place uh, where the uh, corn blossoms, corn, where corn blossoms within many waters. That's what Tamiawa uh, translates as. And, and so when I was there, uh, I firsthand saw this aquaculture 
that hasn't changed since time immemorial and a lot of fishing ceremonies and 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 this uh and this connection to the totonaca people like maybe it's a few hours no no i'm sorry not a few hours it's like maybe an hour or 30 30 minutes driving uh out of, outside of tuxpan it's this place called papantla and in papantla there are these uh, uh um uh, ancient structures of the Totonaca people uh, called the Tajin. And these are the descendants of these people from uh, 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 that area. And so, um, and so, yeah, so those are my cousins. Uh, just sweet, uh, just, I miss them a lot. And I did this mural back in 2017. And I, and this is when you enter the town of Tamiyo, and it's, and it's a small, and it's a small little, like, uh, beach town and so uh, uh yeah they still uh, preserve a lot of their aquaculture and and so this mural is called laguna embrace and so this one i did uh it took about two weeks to complete uh i was on top of a bulldozer because the scaffold <laughs> believe it or not uh, the scaffold was actually in tuxpan which is like uh 20 minutes south of that small little town <laughs> and uh, that's where that scaffold was. And so I didn't have access to a scaffold and the ladder was just, you know, it was, it was a really busted ladder. And so uh, one of the locals had a, bull, uh, had a bulldozer and they told me, why don't you just get on the shovel and just hold on? And I said, okay, let's, uh, let's take a risk here. And so, uh, yeah, so I managed to get to these uh, high spaces. And so what's happening here is just, um, uh, you have Sipakli, and then you have like the uh, the uh, these uh, these boats that uh, they cross uh, the uh, the not the, it's not an isthmus it's a it's a peninsula uh, uh, to and fro, and uh, and then it's like a, then there's an estuary within the peninsula, and so they use so they kind of like travel using these uh, boats. And, uh, and so a lot of, you know, within that, there's like this, uh, they, they farm oysters, uh, uh, fish, fishes of all varieties. And, uh, and then early morning, they have like a very, uh, uh, um, they have a very busy uh, fish market. And, uh, and, uh, and so they, they, they still have a huge aquaculture that has existed and, and, and different ways of how they uh, collect oysters and fish, and it's very uh, 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 traditional in that sense. Uh, you can play the next slide. So that's the one uh, mural, the Laguna Embrace. So yeah, so here's a um, so here's a piece of uh, me working on it, and so yeah. So next slide. You can play the next slide, please. So here's the center uh, in the Plaza de Pescador. And so this is, uh, um, so the Plaza de Pescador is where a lot of, where, uh, contrary to popular belief of where like mariscos and the preparation of where it's like, you know, Mazatlan or, or Nayarit or, <laughs> or Guerrero or Oaxaca, where a lot of these like uh, uh, seafood recipes are prepared, a lot of them have their origin in Tamiawa, as far as preparation and 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 the locales of how they uh, prepare uh, a lot of these seafood dishes, and it's known in the register as the capital of seafood, <laughs> uh, because a lot of the uh, uh, Nahuatl uh, uh, traditional forms of, of preparing seafood originate in this place in Tamiawa, Mexico, and so this is where you enter. Uh, so this is a, the the um, the forum so it's like the town the plaza and then you have like this huge stage where there's a teatro campesino uh that you know happens there there's fandangos there there's uh, uh bolero nights where uh, everyone wears white and and beautiful fans and just it's a it's a great it's a great atmosphere and so i was commissioned by uh, by the town, and I, and I went there because uh, I, I grew up in this town uh, before I came to Chicago, and so um, and so I, I was able to um, I was able to you know discuss and, and able to sort of share uh, my my insight as far as uh, what I wanted to to see, and they were um, they were for it, and and 
and I uh, and I was able to create two murals in this town, and, and it was a wonderful, um, it was a great experience. And, and 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 but at the same time, I also I also learned uh, not to get uh, not to get too involved uh, in in um, in in matters that that weren't that weren't my own because I didn't know that there was an election happening, and within that election, uh, they new administration came in and uh now now there's like this uh now there's this uh a uh, uh, pushback of like getting rid of those two murals but the town doesn't want to get rid of them because they're really nice or they're commissioning another artist to do that so right now the murals are you know they're up you know to get uh, removed uh they still haven't been removed but you know they're still up there uh and so uh and so yeah so on, I, on more grounds yeah uh, um, just uh, uh, just new administration and just new uh, new public art initiatives and that. And uh, you can play the next slide. So here we so I kind of showed you guys previously uh, a mural in the previous slides about something new that I was working on. And so this was a commission by the Little Village Chamber of Commerce. Uh, and I used to, growing up in Little Village, I always wanted to express uh, my art. And this is back in 2016. Um, I was able, I did a lot of door knocking and just talking to neighbors and that spot would always get tagged up on. And it would just be, uh, filled gang graffiti and, and the owners just just kind of like called uh uh 311 and they just sandblasted the graffiti off with like no but then they would always tag back it over and so it was about uh so i i eyed this wall for a minute and then i talked to uh, at the time it was uh jaime de paulo who was the executive director at the little chamber of commerce and i kind of discussed uh with him about uh sort of the uh the the conditions in which you know we can't uh you know where you know more murals or or this odd going uh search to uh to really uh promote uh cultura and 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 uh and and really change uh um the uh really change up sort of the uh the landscape around a little village and so there was this quality of life report back in 2013 uh by enlace and various other organizations uh that you know, engaged about by by a certain year in the next decade, how do we improve the quality of life of residents in Little Village? Uh, and just major questions were posed, you know, in this huge community forum at Little Village High School. And in one of those was just people were talking about murals, folks were talking about murals, sorry. Uh, and, uh, and within that, uh, there was a, <laughs> You know, there was just no one wanted to really just take a, a direct action and be a go-getter, and so I was, I was a, uh, I was headstrong, and you know, and I and I took on that wall, and you know, and I, uh, I looked into how to you know apply, and it was my first uh, official and professional proposal to to get this you know wall, and uh, and so I asked a little bit of Chamber of Commerce any resources. They didn't offer me any advice but they gave me a bunch of resources. And I, um, and I extensively uh, 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 did, you know, did all of the, I guess, put all my P's and Q's together. And, you know, and I ended up creating this, uh, this one, this piece called uh, a Hecato de Barrio. A uh, Hecato de Barrio just means uh, the spirit of the barrio. And so in its way, it's just a bunch of surrealistic images of, of a different uh, nahuales, alebrijes, uh, 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 imagery that just kind of that that's saturated and that pays homage to the homeland. Um, and so you have the Quetzal bird, you have um, uh, uh, just uh, these uh, sarape, uh, these poncho uh, designs and, 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 and textile patterns. And, and it was a very, uh, and when working in this, uh, I was able to, you know, engage with neighbors. Uh, the University of Chicago came out. PBS uh, 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 film uh, used this as a film, uh, as a, lo a filming location. 
uh, for for uh, one of their uh, chef programs. Uh, I forgot which chef, but I know it was not Rick Bayless. And uh, I, uh, uh, I, you know, it was a, it was a great chance in which uh, uh, this mural is still celebrated. And you know, I didn't receive a lot of uh, backlash when I wanted to do something different because you know I didn't pr primer this uh, mural. And over the years, it started to uh, 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 deteriorate. And it wasn't until this year, last year, I'm sorry. Uh, I was able to um, get uh, Holiday Jerry uh, to primer this entire wall uh, with his amazing, just amazing uh, troubleshooting skills and, and, and just his know-how of just paint and, 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 and precision on this. I mean, you know, uh, <laughs> he's his own worst critic. So, but he did such a great job in primering it and I was able to work on Fragmentos Obsidiana over this and but it was a but it was a staple throughout uh throughout these four years uh, when, when i completed it and everyone oh it was a photo it was a photo op throughout the neighborhood everyone wanted to take pictures there and but um but, but it was a great time uh, because i i met many neighbors and i met vendors uh street vendors i met uh uh the i just i met uh, figureheads in the neighborhood that that, that emphasize their their love of culture, um, this constant engagement of, of um, like uh, of of, um, of their own narratives about their homeland and and their experiences. And so this mural uh, was bridging these things. And as well as you know, American uh, uh, Chicanos growing up here, uh, there uh, they've expressed you know their you know their insight and and how. And what what this uh, what this this means to them specifically, and so it's so it was a good it was a good chance to engage with uh, with the public through that. Next slide, please. So yeah, so here's uh, <laughs> so here's me working on it. Uh, I think it's Don Lupio, um, mariachi guy. He just wanted to take a picture there. Uh, and looking at this now, it's just you know here's just some production. Uh, 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 samples uh, uh, during, while, while I was working on this. And uh, yeah. Next slide, please. So, and then this one, uh, this is called Huitzilopochtli de Barrio. And so this was uh, uh, commissioned by Red Bull and the Little Village Chamber of Commerce. And this space in particular uh, is very dear to me uh, because this is, this space uh, used to be this empty lot where it was just, it was filled with uh, uh, just, just, uh, it was just filled with people with, uh, it was just broken people. And it was filled with so much litter and trash. And, and it was ideally, it was not a place that you would want to go through, but it was a, it was a shortcut to the alley on Car 11 26. And there was this constant, there's this constant war going on in these unseen barriers of, of in the neighborhood. And, uh, and so, Huitzilopochtli um, means uh, left-handed hummingbird. And that's what it means in Nahuatl. Um, people associate Huitzilopochtli as the sun god or, or the god of war. But it's, you know, in, in a way that it's the literal translation of, of what this deity represented, but, it, there is a uh, philosophical component of Huitzilopochtli, which is about uh, the force of determination, willpower, and so um, and so it energized. And so I was trying to think of ways in which, and mind you, this mural was back in 2000, um, uh, back 2015, 2014, 15. It was this uh, project that uh, that I envisioned about uh, pop cultural. Uh, mural mural spaces and and how do you and how do we uh, uh um how do we change the landscape uh and and somehow engage around uh uh, uh, uh the, these areas and so uh and that's where i met uh, uh a very sweet lady uh and it was doña vero and doña vero would, al doña vero would always uh hook it up with the free elote but i would always you know slide her you know 
help her out, but she would always, you know, give her two cents. Like, it'd be really nice if you paint a mural there or someone can paint something nice. And so uh, uh, there and, and this is sort of around, uh, I, I actually surveyed the area and I asked questions. And what's really interesting is that uh, speaking Spanish has helped me out uh, greatly because I was able to get through the language barrier and sort of American arrogance that is, that's engaged uh, within our culture. And so I was able to see past that and just sort of go directly to the source of like, what, how do, uh, uh, what, what can we do and what can we, uh, uh, what can we like work together as? And so, uh, and so at the time, Nilda Sparza, she was the executive director of the Chamber of Commerce and she, uh, and I was just an intern there. So mind you, this was my first, first like major public work of art. And, uh, and then I had uh, permission, she says, well, you need a sponsor or a funder. And at the time, uh, Tip Binder and Chris Davila at Red Bull, uh, marketing specialists at Red Bull, uh, were in Little Village and just sort of doing a marketing survey. But within the meeting, I was also working on a, another mural within the Chamber of Commerce offices. And, uh, and then they saw, as you go up the Little Village Chamber of Commerce office, there's this the mural that just kind of spirals up the stairs and they were just really enjoying that and they wanted to know who the artist was in which you know uh which was really interesting of how uh as soon as they saw that they wanted to uh, uh they had like this whole arts engagement uh, 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 uh initiative that was uh that was part of their uh, uh, uh it was something that they wanted to assess in the neighborhood uh and so they reached out to me and uh it was a it was a great opportunity uh, to uh, work with uh, work with Red Bull because uh, Red Bull gave Red Bull didn't Red Bull gave me my wings. <laughs> yeah, I was I, I literally was paid to say that. I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Um, uh, I was uh, I was you know I was able to like develop you know this uh, this project and and uh, I met incredible artists who added on to the space. We put together uh, an event uh, and within that event uh, uh, a lot of artists and, and, and were able to just sort of uh, niche around you know that this space. Uh, <laughs> and uh, uh, and so around that and so around that it was a and so around that we put together an event called Homegrown which I, I met the likes of uh, the artist Tatiana Howard, uh, a few other ones, but uh, the one that has resonated recently as a, a tour de force has been Tati. And so I, I remember uh, engaging with Tati with that and some other uh, artists that I, you know who you are if you've been in this space and I love you and thank you so much for uh, uh, absolutely uh, constantly continue doing your work. Uh, uh, and, and I, and I see you and I love you. And I'm so glad that we shared a space like this and we were able to paint the floors and, and paint the other building before it got uh, demolished and it became this empty, huge empty lot. Um, I also just, uh, yeah, and so the artists who worked on the sides on the floor, it was just a great uh, chance to, to really uh, meet uh, more local artists throughout the city of Chicago and, and it was, a great time and so uh yeah so red bull um provided the paint the funding and it was a, such a and it was such a a, a great uh, a volley of, of narratives just complementing each other yeah next slide please so yeah so here's a so here's a bit of a space uh so yeah so you can get an idea how it looked like uh uh, and yeah, so now uh, next year uh, there there's going to be a, uh, a, a, a an announcement because I I've gotten hold of the owner, and I'm we're gonna I'm gonna be re redoing this and not this mural but like the the far side, uh, far side of the uh, 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 far far right of, of of the wall, and so um, and we're take and the entire wall both on top from on top of this mural. So we're just carrying the mural upward 
and right bound <laughs> and so and also the floors too but uh they park their cars there, so i i don't know <laughs> but uh but we are uh i am uh, uh, planning on uh having a open a call to artists very sh soon and then i hope uh i hope those who who would like to participate in this uh, uh, uh really show their force of will and determination to uh carry out uh the message of Wisila Poshli. so next next uh, slide and so now we get to the digital art section and also a production that I'm working on. Uh, so I, as a kid, I'm just trying to give you some context. As a kid, I grew up in Mexico. So growing up in Mexico, I loved, 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 loved uh, 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 Radma and a Half. And those who are fellow otakus would know Radma and a Half. Uh, I would watch it dubbed in Spanish and I, and I always would like to, I always wanted to see uh, uh, narratives and, and stories just merge with anime and, and, and have a, uh, and have some, a, and have a, and have a sense of uh, 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 something uh, completely new, uh, which is uh, graphic novels that, that do share the stories uh, of, of my ancestors. And so, um, and then at the same time, um, not limited to other indigenous stories uh, that are found throughout Mexico. And so here uh, you have uh, some sketches that I did, uh, I scan, I, so I draw these out and I scan them and then I color them uh, digitally. Uh, so here are some, so in the center right here, you have Quetzalcoatl in his, uh, oh, he's, he's a very handsome <laughs> deity. Um, then you have, uh, a Tlacuilo warrior here, you have uh, Toshkatu uh, all the way at the bottom right. And then you have a sketch, this preliminary sketch of Mayaweli. Uh, and then on the far left, you have a, you have a mother and her daughter on their way to this, to the great market of Tlatelolco uh, in Tenochtitlan. And so, uh, and so a lot of this was actually used uh this this piece was used for fragmentos obsidiana and uh jerry actually helped me print the transparencies holiday jerry helped me print out uh the transparency so we can project uh this one this image uh on the left one uh, on on 26th and central park and uh but yeah but here's you know some some samples of what i'm currently working on as far as uh, uh, blending two various styles of that is manga and Mexica narratives uh, to the forefront, uh, and as well as uh, decolonizing constantly my art uh, and 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 really, uh, 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 really really solidifying this uh, this novel uh, this manga that I'm I'm like barely I'm barely on chapter uh, three of this uh, script writing. So uh, this is my uh, this is my attempt at, at looking at a uh, medium outside of painting murals. You can play the next slide now. So here is one of my favorite ones. Uh, this is uh, the secret journey of Quetzalcoatl uh, to Mitlan uh, to awaken the fifth sun. Uh, the fifth, the, so there's this uh, story of creation uh, according to the Aztecs that there were four previous suns before this sun. And uh, the first uh, four sons uh, where uh, there was these human, humans got eaten by jaguars. There was this uh, enormous uh, flood where humans turned into fishes. Uh, the other one was this perpetual night. Uh, so the story uh, that's happening here is Quetzalcoatl and his uh, brother or Nahual Sholo. Uh, uh, they enter Mictlan to collect the bones of the previous humans of the previous son, but they, but it's they go through this odyssey of the of the nine levels of Mictlan, and they meet the Lord of the Underworld, which is Mictlantecutli, and they meet all these like scary uh, 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 things and 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 oddities that that are found in that are found in the Underworld uh, according to the Aztec spirituality, and so using you know the two styles of uh, manga, uh, I was able to um, incorporate and flesh out a lot of this, uh, a lot of these characters in a way that 
uh, uh, that is interactive and it's still an ongoing search uh, to, to really uh, emphasize of the brilliance of, of these stories. And I, I hope to be doing a good job uh, expressing the first bit of this. And so this is part of a, this is one of the panels for uh, the first book. And I, I do have, I do have a comic following after this. So this is just like a cover. And so there's a comic book to this, but I don't want to show it because it's not, I'm waiting for it to be a, um, so, so what uh, program do I use? So I actually use uh, Procreate, <laughs> believe it or not. I use Procreate or, and, uh, uh, but yeah, I, I use Procreate. <laughs> and uh, yeah, uh, next slide, please. So here's another one. This is called Atal Chinolim. This is uh, the the encounter or sort of the promise of Wisilopochli of Quetzalcoatli, which is a, a precious eagle on a cactus. And so what's happening here is that a, contrary to popular belief, there wasn't technically a snake in the codices to where the founding of this great uh, uh, city of Tenochtitlan was uh, to be uh, set up. And so you have um, my two protagonists here and they are witnessing this, uh, uh, this, this sign, right? And in, uh, in the beak of the eagle, uh, I'm sorry, in the bill of the eagle, uh, there is a symbol. Uh, it's, uh, it's called Atachinoli or sacred water that burns. Uh, yeah and that burns within the uh, sacred fire. And it's, uh, and it's supposed to uh, denote uh, that, uh, that, this is, uh, that this is the place in which uh, the Mexica people left from Aslan uh, to, to set up uh, Tenochtitlan uh, on, uh, in, in the Valley of Mexico. And so this is uh, a, a, a homage and, and, or in a, uh, and the message of, of what I think happened and what, and what it looked like. Uh, so yeah. So yeah, and, and in various codices, uh, there's, there's no reference to the eagle devouring the snake. A lot of it is uh, based on uh, uh, Habsburg uh, 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 symbols where uh, there is like, div uh, and as well as, um, uh, Castilian uh, um, uh, symbols in a lot of the current uh, in the new Mexican flag because the Mexican flag has always been uh, changing over uh, over 300 years uh, the Mexican flag the one we actually have now is you know the contemporary one still uh, um, still has the, uh, the symbol of of rock within a, a rock within like uh, 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 the uh, the uh, the cactus and uh, and and the water surrounding it. So yeah. So this is um, so this is the so this is one of the things that I that I want to uh, put out as far as like you know the accuracy behind uh, the this symbol particularly Atachinoli e Iwan Quetzalcoatli. That's the uh, that's what that's what's going on here. Ime 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 Yeah. So next slide, please. So yeah, so here you have um, yeah other bits and pieces of my uh, graphic art, uh, and also um, here you have Tlaloc, uh, which is a rain deity, and he has and I kind of well you know I based it off of flying Nimbus from a, <laughs> a, a, a Dragon Ball, and uh, it's but at the same time I used uh, a, a lot of this is just you know using. Uh, uh, um, uh, what would it be like if, like I said, merging these two uh, uh, um, uh, styles, manga and uh, Aztec narrative, Mexica narratives uh, within that. And then the other one where the eagles are at, this is called Nawi Quetzalcoatli Ipac Tenochtitlan, which means four precious eagles flying over Tenochtitlan. It's also a, it's also a song uh, during uh, various ceremonies. Uh, it's supposed to represent also the four cardinal directions of, of, of 
and uh, yeah, so then you have like one of my protagonists uh, flying to, uh, yeah, flying to this uh, uh, um, uh, this place that uh, uh, that I'm excited to. Well, like I said, I'm you know I'm developing this and fleshing out a lot of the um, uh, a lot of the story, and so uh, 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 as they, uh, she's taking off, you know, to uh, to finish, you know, her her journey. And so, yeah, and so then you have Tlaloc here, which is like one of those, um, uh, 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 yeah, uh, you have Tlaloc here, uh, 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 just kind of like zooming around the sky and just, you know, <laughs> throwing lightning bolts uh, arbitrarily. Uh, so yeah, next slide, please. So you have some more, um, some, some more of my uh, um, character designs. And uh, here you have, um, uh, um, on the far left, uh, you have, uh, uh, my Awelian and you have uh, uh, Ayo, Ayo Tlali, which is like the turtle that harbors this huge magae. It looks like a looks like a Venusaur from from Pokemon, if you get that reference. And uh, and so uh, my Aweli, and in the story, what's happening is that uh, 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 my Aweli and Paheka create this, uh, this sacred drink called Pulque. And uh, and everyone gets inebriated, and everyone has a good time, and uh, um, so there's there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of uh, uh, a story behind that, and uh, uh, I'm excited to you know to because this is also part of you know uh, the comic and uh, manga, and so I and so I'm you know working on that. The middle one is um, a statue of. Uh, or or sometimes it's a uh, which is uh, which is supposed to uh, denote uh, this goddess that's uh, forgotten in like time. And a lot of a lot of people associate uh, the center one with um, with death and and, and 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 plague and pestilence. But there's this. Uh, but I think we. There's this, uh, there's this disconnection uh, to what uh, 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 what this symbol means because a lot of this this um, this statue or this monolith uh, rep could also represent transmutation or and rebirth and so uh, they're the complementary forces and so you have my protagonist uh, here uh, just looking at this statue because it's like. It's uh, it's very beckoning and, and ominous, and you have uh, these vultures. Uh, and so, one of the things that I'm very particular of is uh, putting endemic species in this comic. Uh, there's there's a lot of uh, talk about invasive species and how that is attributed to you know to globalization and climate change. And so, you have uh, various species here of birds that are near threatened or endangered. And so, um, but these birds and, and creatures ha are very sacred to uh, indigenous peoples throughout Mexico and Central America. And so, uh, I've so I've, I've taken upon myself to uh, to highlight these uh, these um, these lovely creatures. Uh, and then uh, you have here my protagonist uh, in a in this uh, in this vignette of like the flowers that are around and the different adornments. Then you have um, uh, this other uh, uh, Mexica woman, a uh, post-classic uh, 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 um, gown, uh, and she's uh, she's holding a quetla sochil or poinsettia, and uh, yeah, it's uh, it was it was featured on Now um, Mexicanismo, which is a very uh, popular page of you know just knickknacks of Mexican culture, and uh, yeah, so that's the uh, so geez, here are some samples of like uh, my. My Mexica manga uh, that is still currently in development, and and I love sharing concept art. Uh, so this is just you know uh, what this is some of the stuff that will be like published and uh, very soon. I'm very uh, excited, and and I hope to share a lot of this uh, 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 um, narratives and oral stories that have been passed down. So you can play the next slide. And so here's the um, here's another one, which is um, uh, Tenochtitlan. Um, you have um, this is sunset, and you have um, uh, uh, and you just have like 
a family together who are like just viewing the sunset and in it's yeah it's just and so that's one that's one that's one of the uh, uh, um, uh, um, main uh, panels of one of the stories next slide please so i so this is one of um so one of the poems uh that i've been thinking about as far as like a reflection um and i'm you guys could read but i'm, I'm gonna read it um anyway and it goes like i know so you ask do we really live with roots in the earth not forever on earth just a little here although it is made of jade it breaks even though it is made of gold it breaks even if it the kasal feathers tear apart not forever on earth just a little here uh now what um and so was this uh emperor not emperor because it's like there's this uh there's this connection to western culture when we can connect emperors and you know acropolises and bullshit like that to these uh to these people uh I Nesavalkoyo was a Wetlatwani. It was he was just a very high ranking person of knowledge who represented this. And in his uh and in this reflection, uh it, he just talks about how ephemeral uh uh creating something is and how it doesn't last forever. But the thing that lasts forever is the implementation of memory and and the roots behind, you know, that that still exists. And so uh, within this, uh, within creating this, I, I know that nothing in, nothing what I do lasts forever on earth. Despite me painting the murals, I, I realize that it, it, it all like breaks apart. I mean, you know, you can put a good sealer that lasts for uh, five, six, seven years, but you know, and once those five, six, seven years are done, you know, the sun, you know, does its thing, weather does its thing, nothing on earth last forever but but what i'm limited to uh is that i've i'm able to do something and when i find it i can leave it just as beautiful as i found it and i know that in a way uh what i did the little bit i did here uh it's it just allows uh it just allows uh, more things to uh, uh, germinate and, and and really take root, and so Nessa uh, uh really puts those a lot of things in perspective. Well, and it's very I find a lot of comfort in knowing that despite different existential uh, 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 things that are going through, you know, static moments of deep thought, I I, I look back into this and know that the things that I make are are ephemeral so yeah so those are so that was just you know a 2020 uh, reflection on like my on this creation creating murals and um and yeah and how uh, life is a fickle bitch <laughs> but uh yeah so uh, i so i was so i've been uh i i things have been unfolding uh in an unbroken chain of uh, causality and so the point isn't the impossibility of escaping uh, the stranglehold of the past or that history is a succession of like um uh, uh, uninterrupted defeats or that the virulence and um uh, tenacity of race of of this culture being torn because of systemic racism uh, is inexorable but rather the perilous conditions of the present and that established a link from of our age to a previous one in which art and freedom was yet to be realized and uh and that correspondence and how we discern between today and times past and the ethical and political stakes of these uh beautiful stories found in the present if slavery and um, genocide feels so fucking proximate <laughs> rather than remote and freedom seems increasingly elusive. This has everything to do with our own dark times. If the ghost of genocide and slavery still haunt in our present, 
it's because we're still looking for an exit from the plantation. And so this exit from the plantation is, you know, pleading so many things of land back, uh, systemic trauma, Black Lives Matter. And so those things are incorporated within this, um, uh, um, in what lasts here forever on earth, and it doesn't last. And the spoiler of that is that um, we're only here for a little bit. And that's what I've been reflecting about. Next slide, please. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you guys uh, uh, for hearing me out. And, and I'm just so uh, grateful uh, to share my work. Uh, uh, and uh, I am deeply, deeply honored uh, for those who stuck around and listened uh, to what I had to say as a Tlaquilo, as a lover of history and language and Aztec dancing. Uh, I, I was a, I'm able to uh, improve uh, constantly and it's all a growth process. So thank you guys so much. Thank you. Yay. Everyone can unmute. <laughs> so Thanks, I'm going to leave this open to questions. And yeah, thank you guys so much again. Who has some questions? Nobody. I mean, thank you. So I, I was surprised you didn't talk about uh, uh, some things in some of your murals that I thought you would talk about, like um you know when you said uh, that mural was contentious or um you know even even the funny thing like how they stole you, your bag of paint when uh uh at that one mural you did i just thought those are funny stories to include not so much negative but they, they really add a lot of depth to them i don't know if you want to take this time and talk about those things so yeah um so a lot of um so with the first mural if you could like go to uh the one slide before the Farragut one. You can go. Just tell me to stop when. Yeah, cool. Keep going. Stop. Stop. This stop, one? Stop. No, this no, one? no. Next. Next one. Next one. And then, one? Yeah, next and one. and I was also making the connection that next that one. one was painted over the one that comes at the end of the slide. Yeah, 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 yeah. And you uh, actually helped me primer that one. And I'm just like extremely grateful. Uh, yeah, that, that, that we've, uh, that we worked together on that. And I, I wish I had the, I was you. able to contribute, I was able to contribute the footage where I'm like, fuck Mr. Pinto Muro. And I primer over your <laughs> painting and you were recording. It was a big joke. It was, it was what? a lot of fun. It, it the was whole time good. I was graping, the, the whole yeah. time I was graping that we're painting over that beautiful mural. And then yeah. I, I was hoping you would talk about why you chose to paint over the oh. already iconic mural. Okay, so that's, okay, so you have two questions. Okay, okay, cool. So, yeah, so it was about, um, well, it was two things. It was about, uh, it was just about approving, improving uh, 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 the insight of just a new perspective, a new format of how I can, uh, 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 reshape, reshape that previous mural. And then I realized that I didn't put so much uh, 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 care in preservation and a lot of major chunks of that mural were falling off. And I had, there were like lots of uh, paint flakes all over the place. And it just looked, it just didn't look something that represented what I do. And, uh, and it was that, and it was just that, that time to, to really reimagine something new, conceptualize a, a, a different mural with, that's, that's thought out. And, uh, and so that was the, you know, so that was a lot of the, the reasoning behind why I chose to go over that previous mural. And like I said, I'm forever grateful that, you know, that we knocked it out during a time that it was just, uh, it, it was just a, it, it was a, it was very tumultuous. And, uh, but, you know, we, uh, you know, we stuck it through, uh, Jerry. And, and I, 
and I just and I think that that force of uh, of really uh, um, of really just kind of like changing the landscape and and really having that determination to actually get the work done that in itself was just so incredible and I just really love seeing how uh, 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 how how your instruction of how you know there's effective ways to uh, uh, um, to properly seal up a mural there's effective ways to uh, uh, look at various variables of prevention of of, of of unwanted curing or this or that and and, and I've and it's and I just and it was such a it was such an it was so uh, uh, um, educational at, at that point I was just like wow and learning as well and so I, I I really enjoyed so that was a lot of that backing that backing that 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 previous um uh, uh, um uh, why why I changed it up yeah it just let, and then let, the let other one known. and then and then the other one which one uh, is it. This forward? Further? Yeah, forward. And so this other one. Uh, this one? No, no, previous. Yeah, that one, that one, that one. Okay. And so this one. Uh, that was only a few weeks before the painting of the other one. Yeah. And so uh, I went back to this one uh, just to check up on uh, the, uh, you know, the Alapera lady that's there. Um, the And just, just reconnect and sort of rechange the dynamic of that space i have started to laugh as opposed to as opposed to cry as i i spread joy and gratefulness that i'm still able to uh, uh, uh get work done still in the neighborhood and despite uh you know despite uh, uh, uh having to having to see firsthand uh, uh, the violence in the neighborhood, I realized that, um, I realized that there was just so much, uh, 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 uh stimulation, <laughs> uh, that can go, that can go about in spaces that have been impacted a lot by violence. And so, uh, the best and effective way was to, uh, uh, visualize this a lot in a way that becomes that art is a healing force and it's and it's a it's a healing force that can heal him communities uh, uh uh and and so so far uh the for the contention component was that uh i've I, i'm just so angry at the at the system <laughs> i'm so angry at the system that that pits together our uh, our youth, uh, especially our, our uh, that are, they live in the neighborhood to uh, uh, to kill each other, and all of this uh, and all of this was just you know uh, 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 this as just anger and, and and wanting to fight the same wanting to fight the same fight that's affecting our neighborhoods, but in a way that was foolhardy. And honestly, I did not, and I thought. I didn't know fear, and I knew that at that point, if I didn't know fear and I just kind of went there, which is rage and anger and frustration, that I wouldn't get, you know, the message across about what this uh, a, a mural represents. And so this mural uh, represents uh, 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 jaguar. It's it's basically it translates as uh which means uh a roar of jaguar within petals and and in itself is that taking and being you know a warrior uh uh for the community using art as that as that weapon uh, that drives uh as opposed to driving away bullets you know you're dropping nuggets of knowledge when they see uh Denosita, when they see um the the flowers when they see the um the triki uh woman from oaxaca like posed uh there and then as well um i had a uh, freddy yakas he actually uh uh he also helped uh in creating this mural and he was also such a great artist and and 
he it was his first uh it was one of his first murals too and, and it was such a great uh volley of ideas and and and, 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 it, and it was really and it was really uh uh, uh and it was a well-determined mural despite you know the violence uh, that that does happen in the neighborhood and let's not and there's those are that's a long list of dirty laundry that that is not just you know my duty to clean but it's you know our duty to clean and it's all all of us you know to 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 push and heal our communities through art and so that's yeah Jose, can, I share my, can i can i share my perspective in this yeah uh, story uh, sure i because um you know, I know, I know it's a sensitive subject, but like I, I was kind of there with the uh, events happening around that mural. Yeah. Uh, the thing you the, the the thing that you you didn't mention, and I'm a little surprised, is uh, uh, just as you were finishing the mural, uh, you know, you know, we weren't there. We we're actually supposed to be there. We we're both an hour late, and in mm -hmm. the hour that we were late, someone got murdered in front of the mural. Um, I'm surprised you didn't mention that part. And you know, it was a really hard time for everyone, and it was it was a traumatic yeah. event. I was working on a mural across the street. Yeah, and I remember hearing you. You, you know, you you were in a state of shock, and you you went to console the the elote lady because uh, she was traumatized having witnessed someone murdered just yeah. after buying corn from her. Yeah, and I, you know, I I documented all the activities of that week, recording video of uh, you know people on the street their reactions, mm -hmm. and, and you speaking uh, at length about violence in the community, mm -hmm. and you know we we went later that night. Uh, there is an altar left for the deceased, uh, mm -hmm. and uh, it, it's even present in this picture. There's a big gray splotch on the floor. Yeah, because we left yeah. a, a white cross there, and then yeah. later that night the gangbangers returned and uh, vandalized the mural. They spray painted the mural, they kicked over the shrine, uh, you know, desecrated yeah. the, the cross, and you know we were out there the next day wiping that off with acetone. Right, and and that's what and that's why I'm just trying to because that all happened within that week. <laughs> and, uh, but I, there was just this uh, sense of, this courage to just, just, uh, you know, probably me, it's just like I said, and I went to Miska's and I, and I asked, you know, Diablo was there. And Diablo is one of the, uh, 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 you know, one of the people that, you know, that just, he's a, he's a gangbanger from the area and I asked him like, what the, you know, what, you know, what went down and why were you writing over, you know, this wall and, and everyone was there. And I think they got the message that uh, I wasn't playing any games and they knew that I was from, uh, that I knew that I was from the neighborhood and they apologized and uh, they were very, uh, uh, they were very, uh, uh, um, uh, uh, um, they were, up, they were, yeah, they were very sorry and they they weren't technically going to do that again, but they know not to uh, mess around with my, you know, mess around with, you know, this wall. Uh, it was, a lot of it was about, um, a lot of it was about just letting, you know, other, you know, other people know that this was their turf. And, but, you know, what was so interesting, though, is that they uh, vandalized the other artists. Uh, they vandalized uh, 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 um, Freddie's piece and, and it was, uh, yeah, we, and we worked together to like put acetone and, and, and clean that up and, and, you, and you were there and, and, you, and you told me about like the things, uh, spray paint before it cured and, and we did work together. But the thing is, it was just such a, it's, it's <laughs> it was such, it was just such a, a tumultuous uh, a, a summer. And then with everything with the pandemic and, and, and people still dying because of systemic violence, it was just it was, it was just an overwhelming piece when I go back with it. And I still to this day uh, have a, 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 a very close relationship to the Alotera lady because I am the only one that helps her move her cart. I help her constantly because no one helps this 60 year old lady that's been living in this uh, country for 20 years and, and 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 I'm out there and I was out there helping uh, her push her cart and 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 the stories that she told me and what she saw and, and just and all of this like sort of like being lumped together it was just this it was just this thing where I I, I, I talked to a few of my um 
a few of my uh, 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 a few of, of the people that I do Aztec dancing with and they all came out and, and we did like a prayer and, and healing circle with uh, with uh, increase the peace and uh, we we uh, we help relieve a lot of that uh, 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 static negativity that still loomed around that space um, and and in the way I I still, in a way, I, I still keep up with what that, how that wall looks, but as far as like constantly going in there, uh, fixing the altar that's still there, I still go there. Uh, and I, I, I've changed it from a place of woe and, and, and violence and trauma to a place that can heal, a place that can germinate, uh, uh, um, can germinate sustainability. And I think that that's one of those things that, you know, uh, that the neighbors are, are still grateful. And to this, and now, because, because of all of this, I now have access to um, that entire block where I am able to transform it, where I have that kind of, uh, uh, um, uh, um, but I have the keys, <laughs> these figurative keys to, to really impact that block because, because it was that block in which uh, there was this uh, uh, black and brown uh, uh, um, uh, 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 picture that they took, uh, um, the, the, the relationships that, that are cultivated from there are, 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 are dear to me. And to this day, I am still, um, I'm still healing from it. And, but, but you were there, which was so wonderful. And you were there helping me cope and helping me assess this in a more mature and, and, and uh, introspective light. Uh, and you shed some really incredible nuggets of, of, of wisdom nice. and, and, and your own, and from your own, uh, uh, um, perspective and I'm, and I'm just and I was very grateful uh, because well I I'm glad I could help um yeah but it, you know I I really admire the way you handled everything too because you know like you you know you were crying and you you yeah. went through the whole like like uh, emotions of it like you you let that yeah. flow through you and like we went back at night uh and uh uh where there where there was a shrine you know you 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 said a prayer and you, you, you know, you, you sang a song for the deceased uh, to, you know, to, to, to honor them. And I was really impressed with all that. Um, uh, and that's just, that's a big part of the story for me. Uh, I actually kind of, you know, took some pictures while we were all out there and then we got to talk to the other people on the street. Yeah. They, yeah. You know, they, were, they were all, pro we were all processing that together. Um, it was a big, it was a big moment in my life too. So. Ooh. Uh, ju you know, just just for it, it, it's a big moment in my life. Uh, having gone through that with you, uh, I, I would not have seen it. Uh, I, I would not have seen it the same way uh, if it wasn't for your uh, going through it with you. Yeah, definitely. Um, so yeah, uh, so we could um, uh, go to the uh, slide, or you can stop sharing the screen, Tracy. Uh, I want to see everyone. <laughs> Oh, what, one more and thing. We can ask questions and, and we can um, tell, them, um, tell them how they fill your paint. Huh? And then I'm done. Hi, Helen. <laughs> a anyone has questions, please. Uh, I'm happy to. Uh, yeah. I have them. a question. Yeah. Um, so, about the, the anime or the manga that you're working on, yeah. um, I'm very curious. Are you redoing like. Um, stories that are already written and all this stuff, or are you like mixing your image or your imagination of what the story was like? Or yeah, so I am. So a lot of them. So it's funny. A lot of them. Uh, a lot of the stories are already written stories that have that already have a placeholder in. Uh, the Mexica tradition, and what I will be doing with this manga is just uh, giving it a little bit of my twist, but it, it, at the same time, it, it's this blend of Rumiko Takahashi style with 
um, with yeah those uh, with, this, with those narratives that that, that come with uh, uh, the Mexica uh, uh, um, uh, uh, mis uh, spirituality, uh, 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 the magical realism that is that is existing uh, um, in Mexico to this day. And then uh, for for those, are you doing them like individually? Like if that's going to be one manga story, or are you trying to fit them all into like? I'm trying manga? to fit them all. Okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm, fitting, I'm, like, I'm not lumping them all together. I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm curing, curating them uh, rightfully and doing them justice. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm yeah. very, I look forward to it and reading. Um, them. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much for that. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Any questions? I love you all. I, love you. <laughs> I, had, I, had a, I actually had a question uh, I was going to ask like you mentioned sort of uh, two uh, animes uh, are there any sort of other animes you would say you take your uh, art style from oh I, I, been, I actually have an answer to this so one of my um, go to animes um, is uh, Yu Yu Hakusho and, uh, <laughs> and so uh, I, like, mm. I, I, it's just, an, it's just this, uh, the drawing, uh, the drawing uh, uh, and the cell work, uh, it, it, it's, it's very, uh, uh, um, the very macabre uh, 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 styles. Mm. And, and so one of the, and so one of the, uh, um, and so one of the panels that I have uh, drawn out where uh, Ketsaokoa is in uh, the underworld, I was able to recreate something in something in that light where um, uh, uh, where there's this uh, there's spirit component and then at the same time there's like this area where it's just like a very eerie a lot of bones and, 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 and like ruins in within that that whole thing but it was inspired by uh, 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 some of the some of the landscape uh, 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 of uh, Yu Yu Hakusho. Another one uh, is um, uh, I think it's Tessaro Omori's uh, work of uh, Only You. Uh, it, it was this uh, anime that came out in uh, 19, I want to say 85, and it's about uh, the dream world, and, and, and it's about this girl who, who's in this, it's this perpetual state of dreaming, and whatever she's dreaming manifests and materializes in the real world. And so, and, and in this uh, movie, it, it, it's basically the plot of Inception and the plot of Paprika. I won't, I won't get into my, I won't ruin it. <laughs> but uh, uh, yeah, so it's, this, it's, it's set in a very uh, Blade Runner-esque uh, aesthetic. Uh, it's cyberpunk as fuck. And, uh, and it's, a, it's, it's, a very, uh, it's a very engaging movie. Um, Omori also had, uh, has done work with like Ghost in the Shell, uh, Akira, you know, to name a few. Uh, so uh, only you, and he did it with Rumiko Takahashi, which is like, uh, it's just <laughs> two great brains just kind of smushing together in a storyboard room is just, and then you see the actual uh, deep philosophical meanings, the, the interplay between Sinto and, 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 uh, uh, um, and, and, and also and automatons and, and dreaming. It's, it's, it's a wonderful, it's a wonderful story that I'm kind of like incorporating elements to this uh, to this manga, but it's not. Uh, uh, but it's it's still influencing my own perspective of how I'm. These are original characters, and uh, to and I, I and I do all the drawing. Uh, I don't you know I don't trace. The only thing I do is just I color them. That's all I do with the um, uh, with the the program that I have with Procreate. So that's that's something that I that that I'm that I, that I tailor it. Can you, can you repeat those two? Which one? Uh, the anime that you're referencing. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's called um, Only You. Uh, it's Urase Yatsura. Only, um, yeah, Beautiful Dreamer. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Beautiful Dreamer. Beautiful Dreamer. Uh, only You. And there's like a, there's like a tagline. But that's, that's how I, that's how I found it on, um, on Kiss Anime. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, oh, yeah. It's like, uh, oh, I know, I know. I still haven't, I still haven't got to give Crunchyroll money. So it's like, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, 
Any uh, follow-up questions with uh, the Aztec manga? I have one more. So yeah. have you considered collaborating with like an animator or something like that just to do like little ones or something like that or little short stories? So or maybe um, in the future, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. So in the future, I will be hopefully collaborating with an animator. But for now, I just want to get uh, the manga off the graphic novel off the ground uh, because I feel that once I'm able to share uh, this uh, these stories, uh, I think you know there 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 will be an animator out there. I it's up called the Laos. I'm pretty sure there <laughs> is. <laughs> like, they're just waiting. Like once this guy says yes, <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Puts a post out. I need an animator. Everyone's gonna be right. like going to. <laughs> yeah. So I, I really just want to get you know the graphic novel out uh, 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 first before you know I do any kind of animating. I know you can animate on Procreate, but it's just if you animate for a lot, it, it just it the program my computer runs really slow, and so it's mm. just like oh. I need a bigger, I need bigger RAM and bigger. Uh, it's like I feel feels pass. to me it's like you would need a desktop computer. Oh yeah, to actually handle that yeah. one. Yeah. And so, uh, uh, so yeah, so that's what so that's where we're uh, so that's what I'm currently on, and so uh, yeah, uh, but yeah, the, uh, the 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 novel will come out first. It's like hi, and it's like I actually have a mic now, so I can talk to everyone. <laughs> You ever consider a, like a GoFundMe? Try to get, uh, you know, have just like funds, just tons of money, just raining on in, and you can just focus well, on Well, you better that. rain money on me, gringo. It's like, will you be the first one? The first yeah, because that looks fucking dope. Not yeah. going to lie. I've been waiting for Mexican what? animes, man, for so long, so long. And then when you started doing those things, I was like, this is everything I've ever wanted. <laughs> oh, I feel like there's a demand and there's not a lot of that I know, out that's there. What, exactly. That's why I was yeah. surprised. I was like, how is well, this now? I was honored to go to a, uh, well, it's a Mexican American Comic Con. Uh, it was virtual. And we, I met up with a bunch of great uh, 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 comic book artists that are uh, Mexican American, some are from Central America, and it was a very cool opportunity for me to uh, 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 vibe and, and, and sort of merge ideas, but as far as like the nostalgia uh, uh, factor that Rumiko presents, it, it, it was just uh, so, it was fresh, and, mm -hmm. and it was this, uh, and and this thing where we can um, uh, tell a lot of the uh, 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 um, stories uh, through through this uh, through traditional traditional manga, and and, and so uh, uh, there was this uh, great artist by the name of uh, Ganzi. Uh, please follow him at G O N Z I N K Ganzi. He is this. Uh, he's also working on a novel that is uh, that it's it's going to come out next year. Uh, 2022 but he's also uh, uh, he's a big uh, uh, Zelda Lord of the Rings uh, got fan and so he's uh, incorporating a lot of the Aztec he's making an Aztec legendarium like this guy is you know he's doing such a great job uh, 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 you know of flushing out uh, those stories as well and so um, and so during this like during the comic-con like forum panel like we you know there was a lot of discussion about like uh, um, you know, uh, 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 sim symbology and, and what, 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 what does all that mean? And, and so I was, uh, I was just kind of like <laughs> clicking away, just like, oh, this means this. <laughs> it's so, and nerding out. And, and so, um, and so I had a, and so I met a lot of, uh, great people there. I met, uh, uh, artists and, and comic book artists that are you know really are trying to uplift you know a, a lot of these stories uh from uh latin america but giving them a a, a new uh, a light and twist uh, to them through comics and and the and so like a lot of times there's not a lot of uh, uh seats you know in, in most of the characters and comic books are you know you know are white and cis and it's just ooh, there's just 
you know, and so there's not a lot of uh, uh, conversations at the table. So these artists uh, make their own table and they make their own, uh, uh, they're pushing for their own uh, uh, comic, uh, comics and graphic novels and, and, and merch uh, within their own network. But it, it was a really great opportunity because um, uh, 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 the, what I'm putting out there, especially with because recently I posted something uh, with uh, two Aztec warriors kissing, and I got in so much hate, uh, threatened. I, I've gotten my life was threatened. I, I, I so it's, it's a ladder of things, uh, 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 because there are people who are ex zealots about like uh, keeping the Aztec, the noble Aztec warriors like heteronormative and then blah blah blah, and just, just what. And so uh, really, really changing uh, that perspective uh, because uh, some of these warriors, uh, they were, you know, they were also in the cult of Xochipilli and Xochipilli is like the Prince of Flowers and, you know, he was like the uh, uh, patron deity. And so, uh, so like I think about it like Shinto, like Kami, a force of nature, like Princess Mononoke, like Kami. Mm -hmm. So that's Xochipilli, right? And so, so Xochipilli, they had this Teucali or this, uh, the house of the house of where this deity resides. When the friars came and they saw, you know, the boys holding hands and girls holding hands and kissing, just 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 all that, they intentionally burn this, uh, you know, this teucali, and 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 so you know, so there's a lot of stuff we don't, um, we're not too, um, you know, there's there's a lot of uh, uh, um, uh, things that are not been said or, or talked about because of, you know, different uh, archaeological arguments uh, of what Xochipi represented. Um, and so, but at, at its core, they burned the temple down because they were, you know, committing sodomy. That's why. Xochipilli, you know, this is Xochipilli, by the way. Uh, but Xochipilli also means a uh, 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 prince of flowers. So it, 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 it's a lot of, um, there. It, there's, there's a lot of different, um, variations of how Suchipili is a concept in nature as opposed to an actual physical manifestation manifestation of a god and so um and so yeah so that 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 post that i made about of uh of those two uh, uh the jaguar and the kwawatli war i'm sorry Kwa, Kwa Kutili warrior uh kissing is that these are two high-ranking warriors and they're like you know and they're just kissing that's it and it happened and you know there before this god came to these shores like there was already many forms of expression gender expression uh there were many forms of love and they was all you know uh, um uh just sort of chopped and 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 and, and it was uh, stigmatized and 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 things got imposed on. And so this binary way of thinking has been the norm for the past 500 years. And so who's to say uh, uh, that, you know, there weren't warriors that weren't, you know, gay. So it's just, what? Man, if it happens today, it happened back then too. Like, right? that's just how it is. <laughs> like, right? that's how people have always been, you know, like, yeah. but the people have been trying to, especially like, I know in Latin America, it's a lot of machismo, you know, like we are mm. men, like, uh, this is like that's why I do enjoy that you did push it when I saw that I was like oh this is new okay okay that's good. okay thank you I was actually yeah. Really proud of you. yeah I was very happy too I was just like you should be doing more of that stuff. finally yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think what happens when a lot of uh, cultures are colonized and pushed for white religion that we we get we're like homophobic it happens in the black hood too it happens it's the same shit in the same communities like. And so mm. it's this, this Christian, Gregorian, Catholic, you know, goosebumpy stuff from Europe that has infiltrated our, our uh, I won't say like our tribal ways, but our, um, our more indigenous and close to ways, you know. So I've noticed a pattern, like it's happening to all of us and it's something that we need to get out. I was going to ask that. I'm so glad you brought that up because I was going to be like, um, like, how do you feel about that? Like, how do you feel exploring that in your hood when you know mm. everybody's homophobic? So, yeah. Um, well, I've, 
So, <laughs> let me tell, so let me tell a story really quick. When I was working on Fragmentos of Siriana. Uh, so there was a, um, uh, so I had a call. Someone called me up and said, there is, a, you know, someone has, someone called the pawn shop and then the building owner calls me. And it was the most bizarre call talking about there was someone who was working on the mural and uh, they were sexually harassed, mind you, mind you. I am the only one there and I have not in interacted with anyone. But I do know it was someone who is very homophobic because it was a male, it was an anonymous male caller who called about, uh, about them being sexually harassed. Mind you, I am, I am so single that if I were to ever go to Star Rock and like scream, I love you, my echo would yell back, we just want, I want to be friends. That's literally, <laughs> literally how, what the situation was. And I was just, uh, it was just so bizarre. And I, I, I was just, I didn't pry because it's like, this is none of my business. And I, and I need to pick my battles, right? But I do know that there, you know, there are, there are homophobic people out there. And there, and these are the people that don't want to see me alive, and they want me dead. But that doesn't mean that's not going to stop me from creating uh, these Mexica narratives that deconstruct their idea of these heteronormic, heteronormative tropes in these stories. Good. Yeah, I'm glad you're exploring it. That's what I want. Yeah. To do. I already knew because we've been talking for the past 48 hours. <laughs> <laughs> I actually practice. I actually practice this whole uh, 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 presentation with you. So, <laughs> so, <laughs> so I'm. Uh, I'd be remiss if I were to say that there. I would not. There's this like hole that you uh, that you did not push for me to do. So I. I it's truly grateful. <laughs> yes. You were prepared. You Top. have a whole list anyway. So. Oh yeah. <laughs> I had a. I had to figure. I had to, you know, cover all bases. I've been printed and everything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna. I'm gonna say. Let's have a one or two more questions, and then we yeah. can wrap it up, and then have free conversation, not recorded. Okay. We're perfect. still recording. Yeah. Oh no no that's fine that's fine. <laughs> Does anyone else have a, a question for um, Josue? Yeah, uh, Robert, I can't hear you. I have a comment. Sorry. Okay. So, can you hear me? I can hear you. Oh, okay. Oh, hello, Josue. I'm glad to see you here. Josue. Um, I got my little... Uh... That's so cute. <laughs> That's the print you gave me a couple of years ago. I, I, I cherish it, so I, I, I figured I'd bring it out tonight. Um, just wanted to say um, I liked your story about 26th Street. And just so you know, some of those bangers and cholos are actually gay themselves. You and both know that. Yes, girl. Um, mm -hmm. So some of them are working over their own homophobia. They need to get over it. Um, mm. Glad you're out there doing what you do. Um, and you mentioned Hilda Esparza, and I just wanted to give you another point of contact. Um, she is now the executive director for the Logan Square Chamber of Commerce. Yeah, so, so, yes. <laughs> so if you're ever looking to do something in Logan Square, she just took over a couple of months ago, and I, I've talked to her, and I know that she had mentioned being the executive director. And when I saw your mural, I was thinking, oh, I wonder if he knows Nilda. And so I just oh. wanted to make sure you knew that just in case you're looking to do something maybe in Logan Square. And I know they have a nice office that could always use some artwork or murals. So well, just wanted to throw just, that out there. Let me you. just say uh, one thing and one thing, and I kind of want to like comment on, piggyback what you just said. Um, Nilda Esparza is a, a very dear human that I cherish and honor. I had the privilege of being going to Oaxaca with her and doing a residency out there with her. Uh, uh, I did, I, it's, mind you, this is this enormous body of work and I, and I wanted to, you know, con, com, 
pressed this in, in the lot of time that Tracy and any square and hairpin is, you know, giving me. So, uh, but I went to Oaxaca with her and it was an incredible experience. Uh, we, we laughed, we cried, and it, it was just a, a great uh, 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 atmosphere uh, uh, of how I, how I, I always uh, uh, emulated a lot of my professionalism based off her, uh, 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 um, just based on how she presents herself, how she uh, engages with uh, community members and stakeholders uh, throughout the city. And so I, uh, I would, I, I am just, I, I, it's, it's so great to hear. And, and I am just so ex happy and just like, I was just bursting like, wow, Nilda. Yeah, so I, 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 I just, if you ever do see her around, just tell her, I said, so Josue says hi and just send her a big virtual hug. I know COVID and shit, but just, yeah, if you ever see her around, yeah, because I'm, because Nilda is just so, such a great uh, 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 person and she got me the context uh, that I have now currently, professional context that, 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 that I still keep up with to this to this day. And so I, I am forever grateful for Nilda, forever grateful. I took a screenshot of the mural. And I'm going to send it to her and tell her that I heard a talk by Joe Sway. So I will do <laughs> that. Sway. Yeah. And uh, just for future reference, her email is nilda at loganchamber.org. So if you ever want to just shoot her an email, nilda at loganchamber.org. Fabulous. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Um, one last question before we... Anyone? Oh, Tom. Yeah. yeah. Um, I'm a huge fan of uh, skulls and skeletons and stuff. And I know every culture has their own meanings uh, or, you know, why they, I guess, represent that in their mm -hmm. artwork or their culture. Um, can you explain to me why... Um, you know, uh, skulls and skeletons and how that interacts with the, um, the culture. Okay, I will explain this to you. I always have, so I always use, I always use this as an example. So uh, what I painted here, uh, Tom, is this is the symbol of Mikisli, right? Okay. Am I Q U I Z T L I, Mikisli. And so Mikisli is a concept and a symbol found on the 20 day count in the Aztec calendar. Now, what Mikisli would represent uh, most of the time when uh, we look at bones uh, 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 in uh, any place of spiritual gathering, especially in the, um, especially in the old world, a lot of the uh, uh, um, people who do get buried in catacombs or in like, uh, um, uh, uh, um, or it starts with an O, I, I know the word, I know the word. Or, Oriarium, Orarium, Orarium. Well, it's basically a, a place where they house bones in um, religious structures. Um, and so, uh, and so that was seen as the it's a, it's a custom and it was practiced in Zoroastrianism and all of these uh, uh, sects in the old world of, of putting bones in, 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 in the houses of worship. Uh, and, so the, and so in the Aztec uh, uh, tradition, uh, the symbol of Mikisli uh, uh, represents, uh, it, it literally translates as death, but it's not literal as what, you know, as someone who translates the language, because Nahuatl is a language, it's not a dialect. It's, it's a full language with its, with its, uh, with its structures. So Mikisli um, would, Mikisli uh, uh, in death, it would mean, um, it also would represent dream. It would represent transmutation. It would represent rebirth. It would represent uh, the, those qualities of uh, the universe reemerging as, a new form of life, and the uh, uh, um, and so and the forces that that play 
uh, throughout uh, uh, throughout life and death as, as they're not mutually exclusive but complementary forces uh, in in their respective uh, uh, symbols. So uh, the one symbol that I showed you is Ikislitlantoli Tantoli Sochi, which means uh, in death uh, you speak the language of flowers when you die. That's 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 what it, 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 it translates as. It. And there's this uh, there's a a, a, a a metaphorical meaning to it, and as well as a literal meaning, which would mean that well, if when when we die, you know, would we or were we speaking the language of flowers? And so the language of flowers is harmony. It's uh, a lot of the positive positive traits. Uh, that come with uh, alignment, spiritual alignment uh, in throughout the cosmos. And so in the Aztec uh, worldview, they viewed the bones of someone as these, these bones are part of the cosmos and not, they're not just this one uh, a bit of, of this person who died and we'll just, and, and whatever, we'll, we'll bury him and we'll normalize that and go on with our lives. No, they, they venerated the bones of people, and they would put these bones in huge structures called sompantlis, and they weren't like perforated skulls of, of like people who were like murdered in like the, the flower wars of like, you know, the 15th century. Uh, we're talking about like intention in which these uh, structures were very, were noble people who were very spiritual, very uh, important people in the Aztec society, they were able to sort of create uh, these structures of bones to honor them. And so, but, you know, but people associate that with, uh, oh no, they were all victims of human sacrifice and, and, and war. And it's just, it's it, it just a lot of it, a lot of it is, um, a lot of it is what, uh, uh, what we can interpret uh, through, through alternative uh, knowledge that comes directly from the indigenous people of Mexico can say, we, they can attest to that uh, the bones, bones like the human skull or, or just any bone in particular is the, is, this, is humans transmutating to a different state or stage in the universe. And so that's, that's what those, that's what Mikisli would in, in, cause it, it's, it's a very, uh, a deep, deep, deep symbol. And uh, cause there's a, because there's like, Mikisli is found throughout the day because the Mikisli in the Aztec calendar, uh, Mikisli is always, you'll always see death because death is, is a constant. And so, uh, but it's not something that we should uh, 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 fear, but rather uh, uh, it's uh, the embracing. And I think that I can go back to like uh, how ephemeral the life is, 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 as long as we emphasize the language of flowers, we emphasize uh, 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 the collection of all the of all the tonal around us, the energy around us, and and how we are, you know, how we, uh, you know, redistribute it back out there. Uh huh. Oh, cool. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. No, that's what that's what that uh, that's what it means. Yeah. Any sweet? Any other? Okay, so. So we're going to wrap it up, but All we're right. going to stay on and we can have an informal discussion. But thank you so much, Josue. Thank you, thank you so it much. It was a really wonderful talk. And um, next week, we're going to have Brett Sweeney. <laughs> <laughs>